Hey, I get a ton of questions about like why people's codes not working when they follow tutorials, and I wanted to make a quick little video showcasing how you can do some debugging. So I have a little 2D top-down shooter here, and you see I can shoot these enemies, right? But let's say you followed this tutorial and things were different. This time when you play the game, you know, let's say in your head you know you've copied that tutorial exactly because we never make mistakes, but for some reason you're just able to shoot this enemy over and over and, you know, they're not dying. You're not even really sure if they're taking damage. So what tools do we have at our disposal here to actually, you know, track this code? And if you're coming from other forms of development, like web development, you know, this isn't going to be a huge shock to you. But as a beginner, the first thing we're kind of taught is to do debug.log statements. Right, so maybe I add some debug.log statements to this enemy take damage function. And when we shoot the enemies, well, we're getting a bunch of log statements here, right? And so we can kind of tell what's going on. We get a little more information. But at this point, I literally only have two log statements. And if you do this throughout your entire project, it's going to get very noisy in here. It's going to be hard to parse out. Logging is essential in a project, and most logging systems can actually get pretty elaborate. But sometimes you're not even able to really get the full picture from just a log statement as well. So I'm going to quickly show you how you can actually use Visual Studio's built-in debugger. You can do this with Visual Studio Code and Rider or whatever else too, but this is what actually comes downloaded with Unity. So it makes most sense to show this off. And again, if you're coming from another form of software development, this is not going to be news to you. But for beginners, if you just jumped into game development, you need to know how to do this. It's like really important. So you'll notice there's this attached to Unity button up here. And so that is vital to actually getting our debugger to operate. So without further ado, I have this bullet script here, which is kind of like the start of our take damage workflow, so to speak. And I'm going to go ahead and on the left side of Visual Studio, add a breakpoint to my code. So when our code gets to this point where we're doing this if check, my code's actually going to break. And so with this breakpoint in place, I can now attach to Unity. And you'll see Visual Studio now looks like it's running. We get this nice orange bar at the bottom. And now when we run our game, let's shoot our enemy once. And you'll see that our code editor actually pops up now, like we've reached a breakpoint. And so really quick, I'm going to show you guys a couple of interesting things. We have these two windows that have opened up down here. We currently have two objects, right? We have an enemy game object. We have this, which is the instance of the bullet. And so we can expand these and we'll actually see like a whole bunch of variables and information. Like we can look at this collision.game object and we'll see their transform. We can look at their position. We have their position value in here and like everything we kind of need. So already at a glance, we have a ton of information at our disposal based on, you know, the two objects that are colliding with each other just in this method. For now, we don't really need to take a look at that. And then on the right side, we have a call stack. And this is going to be like the trail of all of our methods that are going to be called. So right now, it's just calling this onCollisionEnter2D method. That is the first thing that started this engagement. And so let's actually parse through this. Like we're trying to see if we have a collision here with the game object that has an enemy script. And so now I can actually line by line step through this code, which is incredibly valuable to me. So I can actually go down to this curly brace and then into this enemy component that take damage method. And so I can see here, you know, I'm passing in an integer of three. If this was like a variable, I would be able to like hover over it and it would tell me the value of it. Same thing of like this enemy component variable here. I can hover over it and expand it. And I, look, I can see how much health it has, which are the public variables that are on that enemy script. At this point, if I want to see what take damage is actually doing line by line, well, I could step into this method and I'll drag this window down a little bit. Right, so now we're at the top of our take damage method. Our damage amount is three, and then I can just step through this, right? So we're doing a log statement. We're telling our health, which is currently four, to minus equal the damage amount. Health then becomes one. And then we're doing a check to see if our health is equal to zero. And if it is, well, we'd want to destroy the enemy game object and fire an event. But our health is currently one, so it's not equal to zero. Right, so we're not gonna do that. And so that's the end of our trace there. And so, so far, nothing really seemed amiss. I mean, you might have caught it if you were paying attention, but this time, if I do it again, we can go through and step into this. And after we do it a second time, we notice that our health is negative two. So at this point, they shouldn't be alive anymore. Their health is below zero. It should be killing the enemy. But you'll see that right here in this if statement, our, you know, we find our problem because our health is equal to negative two, and we're doing a comparison to see if our health value is exactly equal to zero, even though it's negative two, so it really should be less than or equal to zero, and we notice it's never going in to actually destroy the game object and fire the event. So, you know, no matter how many times we shoot this, our health is now negative 44, and that's why it's not deleting, 
So if we wanted to fix this, you know, we could set it to less than equal to zero. And this time we could shoot it twice. And when it was negative two, it just deleted it. So I know this is an incredibly simple example. If you've been programming for a while and you already knew how to debug, you might be rolling your eyes. But if you're new and this is the first time you're seeing it, this should be like an eye opener to you. This is a big deal because again, this is like a pretty small, simple example. I just took you through, you know, like two methods here on collision enter and this take damage. But in a larger project where you have a ton of things going on at once and update statements you need to parse through, uh, it can be a lot. And sometimes you really just need to put in a breakpoint and see what's going on. It can clear things up really quickly. And I really wasn't knocking debug log statements in the start of it, um, but I see a lot of people rely too heavily on this when sometimes it's better just to actually go into the code and even at some points the Unity profiler itself to see how performance is doing, but that's like a different topic. So anyway, I just really wanted to quickly introduce the debugger because I'm pretty sure the overwhelming majority of people that jump into game development right away without programming experience don't even know it exists. And it is a crucial part of development in all aspects of software development. So comment down below or you know talk to me in my Discord if you have any questions. I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>